We all know the story of the tortoise and the hare. The hare and the tortoise are challenged to a race. And everybody knows that the hare is going to win. It's obvious, the hare is so much faster. The race begins and the tortoise starts moving forward bit by bit, slowly going ever forward. And the hare, so confident that he's going to win, he doesn't even try. He stops to chew on some clover. He admires the beautiful butterflies, sips a drink, has a nap. All the while, the tortoise is slowly marching forward bit by bit, step by step. I imagine the tortoise spending much of that race thinking to himself, this isn't fair. I've got this great big heavy shell. I have these tiny little feet. I move so slowly and yet the racetrack for me and for the hare are the same length. Here's the hare doofing around, doing whatever he wants. He's gonna win this race without even trying and I'm gonna spend the whole race fighting my little tail off just to get to the ending and I'm still gonna lose. And when I'm in a bad place, like I was last summer, when I'm in a bad place, I 100% empathize with the tortoise. I 100% look at the people around me who are just falling into success without even trying. They have everything that they could ever want. And here I am working my butt off and I own nothing. <laughs> I have no job. I have no idea what my future is going to be. I have nowhere to live. I don't understand how I'm working so hard and everybody else is getting so much farther ahead of me with half the effort. I just went on this 10 day silent meditation retreat and 10 days of silence with no distractions, no phone, no pen and paper, no books, 10 days alone with my own mind. And I realized something, it's not a race. I mean, yeah, there's a finish line, but when they arrive at that finish line and someone says to them, there is no winner, the tortoise and the hare are going to look back to see how they spent their time on that path. And the rabbit's going to think, well, I had a good time. I enjoyed the flowers. I enjoyed the butterflies. I enjoyed my nap. And the tortoise is going to think, I never took any time for anything. I spent the whole path pushing and fighting and pushing and fighting to try and get to the end before the rabbit. And it wasn't even a race. That was the realization that I made at this meditation retreat. That and many more. I made a lot of realizations. So this winter has been my winter of healing, which I desperately needed. And as spring approaches, I'm examining my life and what I know about life so far. I've realized that me, Erin, is a combination of sort of three different players. This body, which is a collection of organic matter, tiny molecular cells, organized by my DNA. This brain, its unique anatomy, the neural pathways that I've formed through my experiences, the chemical receptor, and this soul, which I don't really have a definition for, except that it's a consciousness and it's possibly eternal. These three different elements of me are completely unique. There is no one else on the planet, and there has never been anyone else on the planet with this exact combination of body, mind, and soul. So I've learned that my purpose in this life is to understand these three members of my team, my body, my mind, and my soul, to understand what their strengths are, to understand what their weaknesses are, 
and to figure out how all three parts of this team can work together and to figure out what we're capable of when we work together. Up until this part, I would say my mind has dominated, particularly the fear part of my mind, the drive part of my mind. They have dominated the conversation. And that is one way that this meditation retreat really, really informed my understanding of who I am. I didn't realize that all this time, my body has been trying to communicate with me. For 10 days now, I have been in complete silence. And it feels weird to be speaking in this forest because I've only ever been in here during my vow of silence. This was an incredible experience. I'm very glad that I did it. The teacher, he described it as a very deep surgery. And it was absolutely that for me. I learned how much I'd grown disassociated from my body. And when it cried out saying, we're in pain, we're carrying all this misery, I just ignored it and I drugged it. I numbed it. So I learned how to listen better to my body, how to meet its needs as they arise in the moment. I had no idea how powerful the connection between my mind and body is. All the years I spent hating my body, all the years of total disconnection from it, it left me feeling just so completely powerless in the face of pain. But now I see pain as a form of communication which I always knew it was, but a more complex language than I ever knew. And by listening, I can allow my mind and my body and my spirit to be more on an equal footing in this relationship, rather than it being a relationship dominated by my mind. And when all three parts of me are equal players, only then can we really truly meet our full potential. So my other purpose in life is to experience this opportunity to undergo the human experience is so rare and extraordinary. There is no right or wrong way to experience life. There's no right or wrong. There's no winning or losing. There's just experience. And if I measure a successful life by that measuring stick, then I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to. I have had an extraordinary life. I have had so many incredible experiences. Yeah, absolutely. I might have no money for retirement. I might have to move in with my children. <laughs> I don't know what the future will be, but if I measure my life by experiences, then I am extraordinarily rich. Something else that I know is that if life is not a competition, the other people in the world are not my competitors. If life is about experience, then everybody else is actually a teacher. Everyone is a teacher. Even five-year-olds are our teachers. Even birds and bugs and trees are teachers. Even my body is a teacher. Every single living creature on this planet is a teacher. Even the people that are completely uneducated and we have nothing in common with, they're still teachers. Every single person on this earth is a teacher because every single one of them is on this experience, is on this ride, and their experience is something that I can learn from. Even when you disagree with them. For instance, the teacher of the meditation technique that I studied on this 10-day class. A lot of what he taught I didn't really agree with, but in 
analyzing his teachings and figuring out what made sense to me and what didn't made sen make sense to me, I was able to form a better idea of what life is all about. One thing that I learned from this meditation retreat is that your body holds on to all of your emotions. I had never realized to what extent my body holds my emotions. Like I knew when I'm angry, I tighten. I knew that, but I didn't realize that I hold on to it forever or for years and years and years and years. So I just had all this accumulated pain from my anger, from my sadness, from my fear building up in my body. So when I say that the purpose of life is to collect experiences, yeah, you absolutely could chase after hedonistic, pleasurable experiences, but it's important to remember that all of your emotions will be carried in your body. So if you do things that your subconscious feels shame about, you're going to carry that maybe in your spleen, in your heart. You will hold your sadness in your throat. You will hold your anger in your chest. You will hold your fear in your skin. Every mean thought that you think about someone will be will add to a pain in your solar plexus. Every mean thing that you think about yourself will cause a tightening in your neck. And it will accumulate over time. And as you get older, you will feel sicker and sicker and sicker because you're holding on to all your feelings. I've been holding on to fear more than anything. So much fear. And I don't blame myself for that. I didn't know that I was holding on to it and I didn't know how to let go of it. And that is something that I learned from that meditation retreat. How to find it, how to, how, to, how to feel it, and how to let it go. So that I can deal with all of these emotions in the moment, rather than them accumulating for years upon years upon years. <sighs> And when it cried out, saying, we're in pain, we're carrying all this misery, I just ignored it, and I drugged it, I numbed it, you know, and I forgive myself for that, I didn't know, I didn't know that you could store all your misery in your body like that. Which is a wonderful thing, and now I know how to cleanse my body of that pain, of that sadness and anger and fear. So that's a good thing. I've also been learning a lot about First Nations beliefs belief systems, in particular the Anishinaabe traditions, because they're from here, where I live. And from them, I have learned one of the most valuable lessons I think I'll ever learn in my entire life, and that is that all life on earth is connected. If you think about a forest, the trees reach out to each other, they embrace each other, they share nutrients with each other, they support each other. Their roots reach out in the soil and connect to fungi that spread through the entire forest, connecting all of the plants to each other. So when one plant is healthier, it helps the less healthy plants. Through the leaves of a tree, they reach to the sky and catch the energy that came from a sun that's 150 million kilometers away. Through their seeds, they feed the squirrels. Through their bark, they feed the bugs, which feed the birds, which build their nests in the tree's branches. Even in death, a tree is teeming with life, fungus and bugs and bacteria that 
turn that tree into food for all of the other trees. The connectedness of the forest is symbolic of the connectedness of everything. And humans have cleared all the forests and built these big cities where we all live, isolated in our houses, distracted by our devices. We've all lost the understanding of the connectedness of all living things. And I think that's part of the reason that there is so much misery and anxiety and anger in the world right now because we are all so totally isolated, not just from each other, but from all life on earth. I have realized that connection is the most satisfying human experience. Connection between my mind and my body and my soul, Con connection between myself and other people, connection between myself and other creatures, connection between myself and the very earth that I walk on, connection between all the living beings of the earth, connection without an expectation of receiving something, but as an act of unconditional love and radical acceptance as companions on this journey. That is the ultimate source of comfort and belonging and joy. That is inner peace. I know that I am not the first person to realize this by any means whatsoever. But I think that until you experience this connectedness, they're just empty words that don't really mean anything. Even having experienced it myself, I still doubt my experience. After a lifetime of skepticism in a skeptical world, and I'm sure that many people who watch this video will be like, Erin has lost the plot. And I would have totally thought that if I'd watched this video a year ago. But for those of you who have had a taste of that connectedness, of that wholeness, of that oneness, this video is for you. That you can keep searching for that and you can increase the amount of that connectedness in your life. And that is what I know so far at 42 years old. That is what I've gained from this winter of healing. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to just slow my life down and stop being so worried and scared about sort of supplying my material needs take a break from worrying about where was I going to live and how was I going to buy food and all those sorts of things. It was nice to just take a break from all that and take care of myself for a little while. It was completely invaluable. And now the winter is almost over. Spring is teasing us with the first of the warm weather. And by the end of the month, I will be living at Laura's farm. I will be beginning to build my tiny house. I will be preparing to launch our new seedling business. And there will be all sorts of fantastic videos about that journey. And I want to thank you so much for coming along with me on this adventure that is life. Take care. See you next time.